Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we're in Damage Control Central, and our dry dock video this week is going to focus on the tanks. We are currently planning on ballasting the ship so that we can get into dry dock. If an Iowa-class battleship has a trim of more than 4.81 feet, then as the ship sits down on the blocks, her skegs and propellers and propeller shafts are going to absorb all of that weight and they, they can't handle it. So, uh, since we've got a trim of about 10 feet right now, we have to take on somewhere around a half a million gallons or 2,000 tons of water up forward to level us out. That's roughly what Missouri did in 2009 for her dry docking. Uh, they flooded 18 forward tanks, primarily peak tanks up here in the bow, and some of these wing tanks out on the side, and that gave them the weight to safely be able to sit down on the dry dock blocks. We're still very much planning this process, and we'll talk about the actual process in a future video when we've got some, some more concrete information. But in the meantime, uh, we've done some research into the tanks, and uh, they come in many different flavors. So we're gonna talk about those in today's video. So essentially, Tanks break down into uh, three different types. There are peak tanks, wing tanks, and bottom tanks. So, uh, peak tanks would be the ones at the extreme bow of the ship. Iowa-class battleships have two of them up forward here. Uh, some ships will also have peak tanks at the fantail. Uh, I don't believe that any of the tanks on the Iowas would be considered peak tanks back aft. Uh, our stern comes up out of the water pretty sharply. These tanks uh, are often kept dry for reserve of buoyancy. Um, it does seem like they can be filled with liquid if needed, and they are some of the prime tanks that I would fill uh, to get the ship into dry dock because they are so far forward, and that's gonna give us the greatest uh, fulcrum effect coming down. And they're fairly large tanks, and most importantly, um, they had some holes in the late 80s, so the Navy did a ton of work patching those holes and then coating inside the tanks, so they're in relatively good shape. We do plan on dewatering all these tanks after we're done. However, uh, they would be holding water for a period of time, maybe a couple of months at most, and, and so I wouldn't want to see any corrosion started because we're introducing thousands of gallons of water there. But because these tanks are relatively freshly painted, they're at the top of my list to flood. Wing tanks are all these ones you see along the sides of the ship. Many of the ones on Iowa-class battleships uh, run all the way from second deck where they're accessed through manholes uh, all the way to the bottom of the ship. Uh, there tends to be a layer on second deck where you get onto and there's a ladder, and then uh, you drop down to another ladder that puts you roughly at the uh, water line of the ship, which is an expansion tank, and everything below that would be liquid loaded, or otherwise, um, we'll, we'll talk about that later on in this video. But, um, so th these tanks are around 40 feet deep, and they're, they're set in, at an angle, because the ship's belt is at an angle, many of the, uh, the plates are at an angle, so the, the first tanks are sort of shaped like this, and then later tanks are shaped like that. The final type of tanks are the bottom tanks. Many ships, especially warships, have a double bottom, and then they have uh, liquid loading inside of that bottom. Iowa-class battleships have a triple bottom. So there is a uh, layer of voids, and then a layer of liquid loaded tanks, and each tank is about three foot deep. So here, we're seeing the inner bottom, the lowest section, which would be liquid loading, uh, this damage control plate does not show the inner bottom, which would normally be a void. So, uh, now that we've talked about the three types of tanks that there are, there are other ways to divide these tanks up. Uh, first of all, any of the spaces you're seeing that are white are habitable spaces, or listed on the plate as all other spaces. So those are the places where crew will be who are not going to be out here in the fuel tanks or down here where the fresh water is. Voids, which are represented on this chart in green, are normally left empty. They can 
be flooded to help correct a list, but they're normally left empty. And that is where a lot of the reserve of buoyancy in the Iowa class comes from. These ships are tremendously heavy. We need spaces that are just filled with air to balloon us so we stay afloat. And those spaces also exist uh, to help. And like I said, those spaces also form our reserve of buoyancy uh, so that if we start to flood on one side, we can flood over there. Uh, we'll stay afloat better. And it just really helps with compartmentalization of the ship. We have two different types of freshwater tanks. Reserve feed water tanks, which is the highly refined water that goes into the boilers, and then regular fresh water, which is what is used in places like ship's laundry and drinking and things like that. The rest of the tanks are all used for fuel. So we have a handful of tanks that are for JP5. Those show up as orange. And there are just a few tanks all the way back aft under the flight deck. Yellow tanks are purely fuel oil. And these primarily show up in the double bottom. Most of the wing tanks along the sides of the ship are normally used for fuel. But once the fuel tank is empty, we will flood them with salt water, take in water from the ocean, to replace that ballast. That's important. One, it ballasts the ship so that she's sitting stable. Talked about that already. Two, it forms our torpedo defense so that underwater hits have to explode through several liquid-loaded tanks that are going to dissipate that, and then several true void spaces that are going to allow the explosion to go in all directions instead of focusing on the actual armor of the ship. So most of these wing tanks fall into that category. Because we have tanks that hold both water and fuel, there are also contaminated oil tanks. Oil floats on water so that as you, when you drain the tank, it probably won't be fully empty. You put the new oil in it. You don't want a, a watery, oily mixture in your boilers. That's not going to burn well. So you can uh, start to send that over to contaminated oil tanks. And then once you start to get all the oily water out and you're down to just oil, then you've done it. Your tank is now filled with fuel and you can continue to use it. Uh, some of these service tanks are also from uh, the various steam-powered equipment that, that are being used. Sometimes that introduces liquids to the fuel, and then it's got to be uh, serviced and separated similarly. That's usually for things like the lubricating oil. And then, of course, there are diesel tanks. These are primarily in the ship's double bottom here, and those are uh, for the two diesel generators. We've got one forward and aft that can create auxiliary electrical power as opposed to the uh, fuel oil that's in the other tanks. Notice that one of the types of voids are these coffer dams here. They're just completely hollow spaces in the bottom of the ship between where you've got fuel and where you've got water. So if something ruptures a bulkhead and fuel starts to leak, it's not going to contaminate the drinking water. One of my coworkers um, actually went through and counted and made a, a, an approximate list of the numbers of tanks that we have in each of these categories. So uh, for true void spaces, he got up to 300 tanks and then stopped counting. And that's not just spaces in the inner bottom and, and uh, parts of the wing tanks. That, that also includes spaces such as inside the splinter deck, which would never be liquid loaded. It is just uh, reserve air pockets. Uh, 88 of these tanks he was able to record as DC voids, normally empty but can be flooded. Uh, these are primarily wing tanks, although there are a couple in the inner bottom. And the other 150 or more are uh, true empty voids. They are just air pockets inside the ship. Iowa-class battleships have three CHT tanks. Uh, that's for sewage handling and treatment. They have uh, two peak tanks like I talked about. There are 154 fuel tanks, 36 in the inner bottom, 57 on the port side, and 61 on the starboard side. These ships are asymmetric. There are 33 water tanks, all of them in the triple bottom, except this teensy tiny one over here back aft that probably services laundry. Uh, 92 of the fuel storage tanks are in the wings. 
and 36 are in the triple bottom. 28 for fuel and 8 for diesel. There are 23 service tanks. 11 on the port side, 12 on the starboard side. Uh, 8 each side are true service tanks. 3 on port and 4 on starboard are contaminated oil. And then finally, there are two storage tanks shown for diesel plus one contaminated oil storage tank. There are also two other tanks that are just placed inside this space, um, and so they don't actually show up on the plans here. So that's the complete list of tanks on Iowa-class battleships. Um, we'll probably talk about these more in a future video, but we're currently looking at tanks forward of frame 50, the forward armored bulkhead, uh, as the places we're going to flood to bring the bow down while we're in dry dock. Dry docking the ship is not only helping us preserve the ship in the long term, it is also forcing us to do research on the ship and how it works. We are planning on filming as much of the process as possible so that you guys can learn from the research right alongside with us. Would you prefer to see one long stream of the ballasting process, which could take three or four days? Or do you want to see uh, something broken down like for our mask removal video? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. It's going a long way towards helping us get into dry dock. As you can see, the process is now well underway and we can really use your support. There's a link in the description below to donate specifically to Dry Docking the Battleship. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find about the museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.